Yeah, look how look how tall this is. Look what you found the culprit. Cody Fields. I want my legs dangling, but. <laughs> Stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Me of the Town of Phosphorus Town Board to order for June the 4th, 2012. Could we have a roll call, please? Uh, Bernie Bassett. Here. Thomas Wood. Here. Mark Bennett. Here. Paul Lemoyne. Here. Clark Renadette. Here. James Coffey. Here. Rick Collins. A resolution 181, approving the minutes of the previous meetings. Results of the minutes of May 21st and May 29th. <clears throat> 2012 be approved and the reading of the minutes be dispensed with. A motion. So moved. Mr. Renegat, second. Second. Mr. Lemoyne, any discussion? Roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Martin Manick? Yes. Paul Lemoyne? Yes. Clark Renegat? Yes. Bernie Bass? Yes, resolutions carried. Um, this is the portion of the evening where we invite anyone who would like to address the board. But first, we have a couple of uh, planned presentations. I don't see Matt Boyer here yet. So I think we have uh, maybe Darlene and Kristen here. Why don't you move your seat? You don't need to come and stand and you know, you do what's comfortable. You may come to the podium. We would like to be sure we are uh, catching you on the tape. We're invited to do so. Maybe you can pull it up a little, Rick. Uh, we've spoken, uh, we had uh, information concerning the uh, Roderick Brock uh, project that we reviewed and we discussed last week, as you know, and uh, some questions surfaced and we discussed them. I, I believe I distributed response to the questions to everyone and uh, you probably have them with a resolution that is scheduled to come up just a little later. Um, we do have that as resolution 188 to act on it and we really appreciate you coming out to uh, meet with us and tell us uh, whatever you would like for the record and uh, everyone has been in you know it's been shared that they certainly could ask questions well i'll just start off by saying that um, rotter Rock is one of eight properties as i'm sure bernie's passed out that information it's um a repeat of what we're currently doing down in the North Country. We have three counties that we're participating in right now. It's been very successful. Right now we're doing 254 units. This phase two, as we're calling it, would be 246 units. Back in 2008, Conifer purchased HO properties, taking back all of the previously developed Conifer properties. And now we're revitalizing them because affordable housing and longevity within the communities is the goal of Conifer. So we really would like to get support to continue the affordable housing and possibly develop more in the future with the support. I, I assume you've each had time to uh, look over the uh, responses to the questions that, that I had shared. Um, I don't know if anyone had any Not other sure. Actually, no. questions. Uh, yours, Tom, and yeah. go ahead, Mark. Uh, I noticed within the resolution we make reference to the fact that your project is uh, designed to revitalize the, the properties and to uh, assure uh, affordable housing for the next 30 years. Are you doing that? Yes. Your, your uh, modifications that will have a life of, of 30 years? Yep, because what happens is three house currently funded on strictly RD, the U.S. Federal Development Funding, so it's a reduced loan with subsidy from New York State side to it. When we re amortize after the construction period, we're signing up again for another 30 years with RD to follow the same practices that we currently are right now. The only reason why we are looking at doing this is because of the deferred maintenance that took place. So to get the building up to code and hopefully another 30 years out of the physical asset itself is the 
only reason why we're doing that. It's not a profitable point on our part at all. It's for the per prim primary purpose of developing more affordable housing and maintaining that affordable housing. As I understand it, the amount that you can get from the tenants is set by law in English, right? It is. Yep, it's 30% of the adjusted income. Uh, one of the questions um, Councilor Wood had uh, the other night in the work session was, and you responded, but he doesn't seem to have the notes, so I'll, I'll bring it forward, uh, was about the roof that there, uh, you know, by the broad uh, stroke of the project, it looked like this roof, even though maybe uh, seven years uh, old, would be subject to... Uh, it's a general statement <coughs> for the total project, because this is one of eight sites. So this particular site would not get new roofs. It just got new roofs in 2009, but one of our other properties would get new roofs. And the reason why it's listed is we are required under USDA guidelines to develop a capital needs assessment, and they have to be for the term of the loan of the project. So within the term of the loan, we have to look at how long, we, how much more life is left on those roofs, oh. and then put it into a long-term plan. So oh. no, it's not gonna be replaced right now, but during, it will more than likely be replacing before our loan expires. What What is the, when you put a roof on, what do you expect it to be? 20 years. 20 years? So in, in all the product and all the um, places that you're doing, which is like 286, uh, you'd be facing a lot of roofs that were only eight, nine, 10 years? No. No. If the prop, if a roof has been needs, replacing it has been less than seven years, but it's currently got issues with it, whether it's leaking or whatever the case may be for that particular site is what RD makes us look at. Is it fixable or is it replaceable? In most cases, RD will say replace it because of the problems with it. So that was a particular statement that was noted for one of the properties in our scope of work, was that statement there, that general statement for roofs. Right, and so the the roof that's not being replaced, that's within this period of time where it's not leaking. Will um, carry out for the remaining useful life specified by the architect. Yeah, so if something goes wrong with that, uh, does this prevent you from fixing that particular one? Will there be funds available to fix? Yes, there will be funds available. It's we are, when we, anytime we re-amortize our loans, we have to up our reserve accounts. So RD not only monitors our operations, but also our reserve account. They have the, there's a monthly deposit requirement on it. Currently, it's probably only like $1,000 at that. So when we redo it, they up that, and then the <coughs> place of reserves that we contribute monthly. So if that roof needed replacement or repair, we would take it out of reserve. All <coughs> monitored by USDA Rural Development, they have to countersign the check, and it gets repaired to the state sanitary state that's required. Okay. Thank you. You did an awful nice job with the Very questions nice. and, and, and our conversation the other day. And uh, I did share, and for everyone's benefit, I did share with Kristen that I, uh, I didn't want uh, her or, or Lisa or um, Kelly, Darlene, excuse me, Darlene, I should know better, uh, to feel like uh, we were being critical, we were just being cautious representing our community because I think one of the quotes I used on our phone conference was, uh, beware strangers bearing gifts, and this certainly was a very nice uh, uh, gift to that project. Uh, she also explained um, why no one from the project had come to us. There's a sense of urgency to get this in, just based on their timelines, and you know they were moving from the uh, from management very rapidly to uh, to us to get this to work. I, I guess I would just ask, and it really doesn't have any any strong bearing in my eyes, but I, I'm curious: Have you received the other? resolutions from the other municipalities? We've received five out of the eight right now. Um, it does, for our particular project, if, uh, uh, let's say one of the, the municipalities did not want this, I'm not sure why they wouldn't, but uh, is it your, your intent to go forward nonetheless with the others? Yes. Right. And even if we have one town that doesn't support it, that's one block of funding, there's multiple funding layers in this project to make it Mm -hmm. So we would just compensate <coughs> for some, uh, financial elsewhere, whether it's through RD or New York State or more tax credits, we would look at more funding options. And that's partly why we jumped 
ahead of where we originally were on the timeline is because the funding opportunities became available to us. We're familiar with how that happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have 30 days to pull it together. I did, and, and, and I really do appreciate you coming here, both of you. Um, but I, I also don't want to keep you unnecessary. I don't think anyone has any other concerns. No, no I don't. Um, out of, uh, we don't have too many resolutions to go, but out of respect to our guests, does anyone see uh, or have any concern with us going forward to, uh, with that resolution at this time? And then you'd be free if you would like to okay. move on and go go to where or, you need to be. you can stay and listen to a very interesting, <laughs> no, excuse me, yeah. probably won't. <laughs> anyway, so with that said, if, uh, if everyone is, is comfortable, uh, again, we appreciate it. I would ask that we move forward to Resolution 188, um, which <coughs> is entitled Support for Funding of the Roderick Rock Apartments. Uh, Bernie, how yes. we can while we are in this public uh, commentary period? I don't know. Counselor? I don't know if it makes a difference. It may, I, I don't know. We, 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 we formally opened the meeting with our first yeah. resolution. Mm -hmm. Call the meeting to order. We're in order. Go ahead. Uh, we have one other presentation. This won't take long, if you don't mind. Thank you. No, we're, 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 we're going to do this resolution first. <laughs> okay, resolution 188, support for funding of the Roderick Rock Apartments. Well, as the town of Foster has received a letter from Lisa Kingston, project director for Conifer Realty, LLC, <coughs> partnering snow with Snowbelt, Housing Company Incorporated to support funding assistance for Roderick Rock Apartments located in the town of Foster. Whereas these apartments serve to provide decent, safe, affordable housing for low to moderate income persons and complementing the housing goals for the town of Foster. And whereas the properties in this project are currently managed by Conifer Management and are outdated and need right Vitaliz revitalization to ensure their success as affordable housing for the next 30 years. Now therefore be resolved that the Town of Foster Town Board is hereby support the funding application for Snowbelt Housing Company Incorporated to NTS HTF for the preservation of Roderick Rock Apartments and encourages the New York State HTF to approve the funding assistance necessary for the proposed improvements. And it is further resolved that the above statement of support is based on the facts presented to the town and the assurance that Ryder Crack Apartments will continue to operate as an affordable housing in the town of Plaster. And it be further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to Ms. Kingsman, the Planning Department, Codes Officer, Assessor, Town Clerk, <coughs> and Budget Officer. Have a motion. So moved. Uh, Mr. Wood, second. Mr. Ramoy, any discussion? We've had uh, roll call. Thomas Wood. Yes. Mark Manick. Yes. Paul Moy. Yes. Gerard Renner. Yes. Bernie Bassett. Yes, the resolution is carried. Um, for the record, um, Tom, you made the motion. Paul, you seconded it. Uh, in the first resolve, I think the MTS should be the New York State Housing Trust Fund. We would amend that accordingly. Uh, no, both of not, you concur. It's not stated yep. anywhere else. Um, and ladies, I'm assuming, and I'm sure there's something in here, I don't know where, what it is right now. This is going to go to the Salinas Street Syracuse address, a certified copy. This one will go to our corporate office, 183 Rochester. 183 East Main Street, Rochester. And I, I can also leave you my business card. Okay. So you, you can, if you can't get it to them, I can, I'm there. Weekly. <laughs> oh, oh, so okay would, would you like me to send it to <coughs> your name or a copy to you as well? If you want to copy it sure. to me, that would be great. All right, and this if is good to have any. Anyway. If you have any questions, you, you can give me a call. Wonderful. We will do all the previously mentioned. All right. We appreciate. Thank you very much. I well, appreciate it. Thank you. We appreciate your efforts. Uh, and again, for all, as I mentioned, for all the right reasons, we want to be sure you know good things are being done uh, within the community. It sounds like it to us. And, uh, when can you start? <laughs> We're shooting the clothes in October if all goes as planned. Oh, beautiful. And I, I'm sure Darlene's as excited as anybody to see the work. She's been there. working hard to get it improved with what funds we've had. So yeah. this will be a blessing for her. Yeah, it is. Thank you very much. Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Drive safely.
Um, next, I think, Matt is here. Yes. And Matt uh, has a presentation for us, I believe. Yep. Sorry, I only one copy, so. That's okay. I will make sure everyone, uh, we'll move around and we'll make sure everyone gets one if they would like. Um, I'm a Boy Scout with Troop 66, and I'm a Life Scout, um, which means the next step is Eagle. And I have uh, an Eagle project in the way of becoming an Eagle. So uh, it's really about giving back to the community and uh, sh showing leadership. <coughs> um, so I want to build dugouts um, with the town of Plattsburgh as the beneficiary uh, at any location you guys want. I prefer Katieville, but I know that's currently uh, up for renegotiation. So. Hmm. If you want to look through the project, see if it's something that can be done, that, that'd be great. Um, it's 12 by 5 dugouts, too. Uh, the fence in front of it, I, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Most fields require that there's already a fence in, fence in front of the uh, bench, so no fencing will, will have to be put up. Uh, the dugouts, uh, the funding isn't really a problem. The Boy Scouts and the troop will completely cover the funding. Uh, we have to fundraise, stuff like that. It's all part of the project. Well, we appreciate that, uh, uh, Matt, and certainly wish you the best with it. Um, you will need to talk, I don't know if you know uh, Ms. Defiat your best. Yes. It'll certainly be her guidance where these go, not only which field, but also uh, where <coughs> the field, in a specific location. And we probably would all concur that uh, uh, even though Katieville would seem like a wonderful spot yes. given certain circumstances we aren't discussing right now, uh, that may not happen. Um, the uh, other thing that might be a good experience for you and maybe more than appropriate would be uh, to, uh, what, once you get the green light from now on the location, to pay a visit to our codes and enforcement officer. Okay. Uh, we need to talk to you about any permitting and design and so on and so forth. Okay. If anyone has any questions? When do you anticipate, if we were to give you the go-ahead within, say, the next week, when would you anticipate starting the project? Um, as soon as my tests are over in school, so. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two weeks. <laughs> Just about, right? Are, are you a senior this <coughs> year, Matt? Uh, I'm a junior. Junior at? Saranac. Saranac? Great. But we, we've all seen uh, some of the Eagle Scout projects, but also, uh, more importantly, uh, the Eagle Scouts and the work they do. Um, and it's very commendable. Uh, we know across the country, the, many of the men and women who end up being leaders have had uh, some role in scouting. You do learn a lot of things about community and leadership. So we commend you for your, your work and your willingness to take that step. Thank you. Uh, I mean, they're very genuine. Uh, but uh, I would say at this point it would be safe to turn you over to uh, Mel Defiat, who will then uh, let us know what her recommendations are, and we can uh, we have a committee a, uh, that uh, she will work with as well, and make sure you do all the things you need to do. And we appreciate. It. Okay, thank you. Good luck to you. I look forward thank to you. it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, anyone else that would like to address the board this evening? I'll put the project in the file. If you'd like a copy uh, specifically for yourself, just let me know. Uh, th the last thing, I guess, if there are no other formal presentations, uh, two weeks ago we had a, a, uh, a comment during the session from uh, Mr. St. Germain, resident of the community, concerning um, the FOIL process, uh, if you're all here. And uh, we, we didn't respond at that time. There was, uh, I didn't feel there was a reason to. Um, but I just want to make sure that uh, everyone present, anyone listening, you know, does understand there's a process. We have to have a process to uh, protect the uh, staff, certainly not to imply that there were concerns of Mr. St. Germain. It isn't about it. It's about the organization, that uh, there are security uh, considerations given as well as the preservation of, of documents. Many documents have uh, a confidential uh, information, maybe attorney-client privilege, could be HIPAA-related, um, contact information such as a social security number. 
uh, with a number of employees in the <coughs> community. Um, there are times when there have been issues in the past where people like to use the town to uh, find out about uh, other people and get information they couldn't get otherwise. That's all got to be protected against. Um, original documents, I know Rick, you have a meeting coming up with uh, Dennis Meadows soon, a workshop uh, that he will be doing a series of <coughs> regional workshops across the state. Uh, we are hosting one of those, and I believe you're attending, and he'll be talking about uh, preserving our archives. And many of these documents, besides legal documents, become archives. So we have to make sure that uh, they aren't tampered with, they aren't altered, they don't come up missing. So we have a process. And the process, you know, sometimes can be uncomfortable uh, to the people wishing to, to see things, but uh, we have to have uh, some guidelines. And those guidelines, and, you know, the thing uh, I want to make sure everyone is uh, conscious of is that they've been designed based on guidance, based on uh, our own participation in workshops. Uh, you know, we've... Uh, I've been to a number between New York City and Potsdam, et cetera, the readings we get, the mailings from the Association of Towns, and we try to do the best thing. Um, and try to be flexible where we can. Um, a, a simple document, our handbook that someone wants to see, that's, that's a non-issue. You know, have a chair in the hallway, take a look at it. That's, that's not uh, a document that needs to be preserved. There's no confidentiality, and you, know, you don't need to uh, schedule and jump through hoops. So. I just wanted to you know, make a couple comments. I don't know if anyone else has any concerns, and certainly for the public to know that uh, there, there seemed to be some sense that maybe we're doing something we shouldn't do. You know, if anyone can find cause for that, we'd certainly be willing to listen, but we're pretty confident we are. If that's sufficient, I'll let it go like that. Um, and we'll continue the business. Uh, the, the presentations we had uh, just just listen to, I think, are both uh, you know, very good. I'm, uh, the board sort of slowed things down, and, and, and that's good. You know, we don't always want to rubber stamp. We don't want to rubber stamp anything. We want to take a look, but this certainly looks like a great opportunity for those projects. Uh, it puts some significant money into uh, improving them. One of my concerns, and it was mentioned tonight, just to reiterate, uh, is that the uh, relatively new ownership, investing in this project may make them something other than affordable housing. That cannot happen. As indicated, it will always be only 30% of the, I believe, the adjusted gross salary. So, because we need those kinds of units. Um, and um, we'll be anxious to see that get started. With that said, Resolution 182, Abstract 6A. Result that the abstract out of the claims number 6A-12 1066 to 1195 for $189,604.43. An abstract 6A 12, 242 to 261 prepaid in the amount of $566,977.63. Be received as reviewed by the Audit Committee and the Supervisors hereby authorized to pay said abstract. I have a motion. So no. Uh, Mr. Woods, second Mr. Lemoy. Any discussion? Roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Mark Manning? Yes. Paul Lemoy? Yes. Brad Renegade? Yes. Bernie Bass? Yes. Resolutions carried. Resolution 183, Building Maintenance and Safety Committee Monthly Report. Resolved to receive and place on file a report from our pro, Building Maintenance Supervisor for the month of May 2012. We have motions on board. Mr. Renadette, second. Second. Mr. Lemoyne, any discussion? Um, just want to, I don't think we've had a meeting since then, but just want to thank Mr. Bro and uh, his staff for the outstanding work they did on the landscaping out in front of the building. It was long overdue and, and really spruces up the building. They did a really good job, got it in a very timely manner, and uh, I think we're going to reap the benefits of that for quite a while. They did a nice job of it. Well, they did. I, I've had a lot of positive, fee positive feedback, and, and certainly thank you also, Paul. You kind of uh, uh, took hold of that little project, chased it, ran around, got the uh, estimates, uh, worked with the uh, architectural drawings and specs that we had, uh, the town had had for a number of years. So it, it is a nice improvement. And I, it was someone, and it might have been you as well, Paul, uh, or, or others even, 
you know, we have certain standards of uh, what we expect from a project, and uh, we've been pretty adamant that landscaping is not the part that if I get to it and have enough money left, we'll do it. Uh, because we, we take pride in the community, and curb appeal is important to everyone, including the neighbors of any project. So we need to uh, set the model on that a little bit, and I think we're, we've begun to do that. So I appreciate it as well. Any other comments on the report? There's more coming <coughs> according to this report, I see, of, uh, improving our, our town hall. So that's good. If not, uh, and, and the final thing, maybe worth highlighting, um, the safety committee report, uh, absolutely love it for the month of May, no incidents. Right. That's good. Keep those rates down. Um, roll call, please. Thomas Wood. Yes. Mark Manning. Yes. Paul Moy. Yes. Bernie yes. Bernie yes, resolution carries. Resolution 184, planning department monthly report. Resolved to receive and place on file a report from Phil Monbargan Planning and Engineering Department head for the month of June 2012. I have a motion? Hello. Uh, might have been Mr. Wood, Mr. Manick, second. Uh, any discussion? If not, we'll ask for a vote. Thomas Wood? Yes. Mark Manick? Yes. Paul Lemoyne? Yes. Todd Renner? Yes. Bernie Yes, resolution carries. Resolution 185, the town clerk's monthly report. Resolved to receive and place on final report from Rick Collins, town clerk, for the month of May 2012. Have a motion. So moved. Mr. Lemoyne, second. Second. Mr. Renner, any discussion? Roll call. How much wood? Yes. Mark Manick? Yes. Paul Lemoyne? Yes. Todd Renner? Yes. Bernie Bassett? Yes. Resolution carries. Resolution 186, Local Government Efficiency Grant Interim Funding. <clears throat> Whereas on March 7, 2011, the Town of Plattsburgh entered into an agreement with the Town of Schuyler Falls to provide water and operational maintenance services for the Morrisonville Water District. Whereas the municipalities applied mm -hmm. for and received Funding for a local government efficiency grant in the amount of $412,223 that is funded by New York State to encourage and support intermunicipal agreements to eliminate duplication of services and save taxpayer dollars. And whereas LGE funding is released as payments to the municipality following the completion of work and submitted for funds. Now, therefore, we resolve that the Town Board, Town of Blackford, does hereby authorize the transfer of funds from the Consolidated Water District cash surplus in the amount of $100,000 to the Morrisonville Capitalization <coughs> Project, and it be further resolved that said funds be paid back to the Consolidated Water District from the Morrisonville Consolidated Capital Project as funds become available from the grant. And to be further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the budget officer and to the director of water and wastewater department. <coughs> Motion. So moved. Mr. Manick, second. Second. Mr. Renovan, any discussion? Do we know, have any kind of timeline as to how quickly this money is going to come back in the form of the grant? Because I'm just a little concerned that we're taking $100,000 out of consolidated water that might be encumbered for quite some time. Um, it's anticipated that the turnaround, once we submit the paperwork, could easily be three to four weeks. Okay. So it, they don't see a problem with that. And uh, my question also was, uh, there's $400,000 plus uh, in the project, we're transferring 100. I don't want to do this more than once. Mm -hmm. uh, but they felt as, and it really is in response to your question, as the first submittals come back, it will continue to feed this, so that will be sufficient okay. to get all the way through. Um, it's worked that way before. Hopefully, it uh, will continue <coughs> to work that way. It's uh, as clearly indicated. You have a letter from the director. You got to spend it before you get it. Any other questions? Roll call. Thomas Wood. Yes. Martin Manick. Yes. Paul Lemoyne. Yes. Brad Renadette. Yes. Bernie Bassett. Yes. Resolution carries. Resolution 187, home request number 25 is paid for DHCR disbursement number 29. Whereas all costs related to said project work has been inspected and approved by the designated rehabilitation specialist for said work, 
and recommend that the funds be allocated from the housing trust per the approved quotation for completed work. Now therefore be resolved that the town board of the town of Foxford does hereby grant and approve payments in the total amount of $2,600 as payment for DHCR disbursement request number 29 for work related to the project listed as part of the town of Foxford's New York State Home Program Grant Project number 2008-3068. And it be further resolved that the town supervisor is hereby authorized to make said payment for the project in accordance with the agreement. And it be further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the budget officer and to the bookkeeper. Have a motion. Mr. Wood, second. Second. And Mr. Mannix, any discussion? This is about the end of that grant. This is the home grant we've been working on for quite some time. It's down to the last uh, last uh, payments. Um, as you recall, we did, did try to uh, seek funding, uh, I think, a second or third year, and we weren't successful in that. Um, on, uh, another topic that's not directly re related to this, but Mr. Correll has been getting uh, applicants who are very interested in the micro enterprise grant. We had a very good kickoff meeting with that, and a good opportunity for me to share the uh, economic, strategic economic development master plan project has uh, taken off at our first meeting at 100% participation. And that's kind of an exciting project also that uh, we're working on. So they're all, all related, uh, and so it is. <coughs> would, would it be beneficial in any way, Bernie, to have uh, applicants? Uh, Applications, I say, should say for uh, more of these grants to put in with the next uh, grant application to show that we are still needing the community. I thought so. That, that's a really difficult grant, it seems to get, and uh, I, I can't speak for the people who review. The very first year where we denied, I requested an audience uh, with the review team, and I requested a copy of their work to indicate exactly where we fell short. Um, the next year we got funded, and there wasn't a whole lot wrong with the first application. I think the thing they face is the need is so huge. And um, I mean, we all know about rural needs, uh, rural seniors, rural poverty, but compared to <coughs> urban poverty, it's tougher to wring the money when there's limited, and I, and I, you know, that's my opinion. I honestly think that weighs heavily on this. Um, my comment is, unless I can have some better assurances, um, we're not going to keep spending money to submit these. Uh, the last couple we submitted at, I think it was half the rate of the original because a lot of the, you know, groundwork was done. But it's it's frustrating uh, for the people that need the work and to improve the homes in the community, but. <coughs> It's where it is. Um, I, I, I don't anticipate anything else right away. If things uh, ease up a little bit, we try to keep our ear to the ground on things like this. Um, you know, how the state is managing these funds. Sometimes they begin to think regionally with them. And, um, you know, you feel like the, the market's open again. But it's not hard to see where the money goes, and it's not going upstate. Any other discussion? Roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Martin Mannix? Yes. Paul Moy? Yes. Gerard Renata? Yes. Bernie Gosh? Yes. The resolution carries. For the record, 188, um, we read early while our guests were here, and that one uh, also passed unanimously. <coughs> Which leads us to resolution 189, temporary seasonal hire for summer lifeguard staff in the Recreation Department. All right, the supervisor has received a letter dated June 1st, 2012, from Melanie Defy, Youth Service and Recreational Director, requesting the hiring of summer lifeguard staff. Whereas all employment verification <coughs> and eligibility have been satisfied, and the Youth Service and Recreational Director recommends that the attached list of candidates be appointed to said position. Now, therefore, be resolved that the supervisor is authorized to sign all necessary documents to hire a seasonal temporary help in the Park and Recreation Department 
and for certif and a certified copy of this resolution be given to the budget officer, youth director, cool insurance, and Clinton County Civil Service Department of Personnel for their final approval and filing. I have a motion. So moved. Mr. Wood, second. Second. Mr. Lemoyne, any discussion? Mel, you're here. When this uh, came to my eyes today, and, and I kind of grinned, because I think you did, as we've been talking, you took it to the committee first. <laughs> and and it, uh, it needs to be acted on, so we brought it in today. Uh, I saw the list, and I said, my God, are they all lifeguards? Um, I have two questions. Is that typical of the number that you've brought on board in the summer? summer? Yes, um, probably the first six or seven guards um, are full-time, 32 to 40 hours, and the rest of them are subs. And the reason we hire so many subs is because in the summertime, kids have a thousand things going on. So we have lots of people to pick from to fill positions. So all those at 950 then are probably subs? Yeah, the ones that start out low, when they first start, they start at nine and they work their way up. Every year they come back, they get a little increase. Yeah. Well, you're smart to have some sort of a feeder system also, but the second thing that was in my mind is uh, it had to be quite difficult to find that many certified lifeguards. Yeah, we we're fortunate enough, Plaster State offers a lifeguarding course every spring, and four of those kids just came from the course, so they're new, they're 16, they'll start out as subs, get their feet wet, and they'll work with senior guards. Mm -hmm. So that works really well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good uh, Pop Warner, if you yeah. will, and yeah. it makes a lot of sense, but I know I know it's hard to find them, <coughs> and uh, to find that many, I think, is great. It also speaks well to the community that our young people are, are doing this. Uh, so much of it doesn't require batteries, uh, I don't know if I'm interested. So, you know, these, these are, are healthy uh, youngsters, and that's great. Town Plasterg actually has a pretty good reputation, too, for being a good place to work at the beaches. It's, mm -hmm. you know, there, there's a lot of support when you're out there, and well, a lot of the kids, a lot of the kids today are, are fighting for seasonal jobs. <coughs> and people who are married and have children that are fighting for work. So, uh, this is something unique that the word gets to the school, and in, in that culture, they can work on it and uh, be eligible. So that's great. Yeah. Anyone had any other questions? We're fortunate to have Mel here tonight. No. The roll call. Thomas Wood. Yes. Mark Manick. Yes. Moy, yes. Randa, yes. Yes. Resolution carries. Um, that's all that I have for resolutions. But I would ask for a motion to go into an executive session to discuss the proposed acquisition, sale, or lease of real property. So moved. Mr. Manick, second. Yes. Mr. Lemoy, you have any discussion on that? Can I have a roll call on the motion to go into executive session. Thomas Wood. Yes. Gerard Renda. Yes. Bernie Bassett. Yes. Oh, no. Harvey Manick? Yes. All the Yes. And we will uh, move to an executive session at 7.08. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't expect it to be too lengthy. Ricky, I would like you to be able to close it out with us. So we'll just go off air for a few minutes and return. We're inviting Mel, please, to join us. say go Rick okay I need a motion to come out of executive session is it on yep so we'll Mr. Renata second second Mr. Wood any discussion a roll call on that motion Thomas Wood yes Gerard Renata yes Mark Manick yes Paul Lemoy yes Bernie yes uh, time 7 32 p.m. Uh, that's, uh, for the record, no action was taken uh, as a result of that, and none will be tonight. Um, no one has anything else? I didn't change a motion to adjourn. So moved. Mr. Mannix, second. Second. Uh, Mr. Renadet, any discussion? Roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Gerard Renadet? Yes. 
This young man might do his work at. Well, Tom just actually had a nice idea about my career. Because it is out in the open, there's no trees. Mm. Water rains out. There'd be a nice spot to have some protection from the elements. And there is a big field there, so I would only put it on a big field, not on yep. a little weed field. And, and uh, we need to kill the cameras just a minute, because I'm like confident that I don't want to make it on the record. There's two cameras. I'm standing on <laughs> well, Stereo optic. How's that? Is that better? <laughs> there's, there's, always been about, there's always been concern about putting dugouts in certain areas I, yeah. I know because that. of the activity that takes place. Yeah. I don't think we have some out of the rain. It may no. huh? it keeps them out of the rain. The <laughs> only situation I need to be aware of is that I don't get in the way of soccer fields because when we switch the fields over, I have to make sure there's nothing and make sure there's not. It's way on the outlets. So no okay. Hey, uh, Mr. Renner, I hear I'm taking you out for lunch. I want that's No one told they didn't tell you? Oh, I asked them to call and tell you. Oh, yeah. Hey. Lunch with Bernie. Go first class. Lunch at Bernie's. You didn't get that email to uh, vote on uh, the fundraiser for the relay? Lunch with me. Your place anywhere in the town. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, your name's right up in the file cabinet. 